Games Workshop sent us some of the awesome new croup models. That conversation has made me realize how much of a skill that is. This is my This favorite. is absolutely wild. I call that like a happy accident, so I just sort of went with it. As you were explaining it, I was thinking, that can't be what it's gonna be. If someone did an army of these, oh my God. Right, are you all, uh, you all live now? Can we get back to normal? Yeah, if you want. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I was, yeah, literally, when's the last time we did all just three of us? Like four of weeks ago? It's, it's been a while. It's yeah. been a while. Feels weird, right? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I'm back. I'm, I'm actually, if we want to get into it, I'm still feel, not feeling great. But, you know, I'm have a little back. pity Have a little pity party for Joe in the comments. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm pushing through. Well, someone was defending you the other day. They were like, I'm just going to comment so Joe doesn't feel like he's I know, depressed, yeah. you know? Yeah, I appreciate yeah. that. Um, so, yeah, more of that. <laughs> more of that. More, more of that would be good. Okay. Well, yeah. what's been going on in the last uh, last week hobby-wise then? Because we've had a, lo a long run of guests <clears> and irregular episodes for a while. So The return of Paul. Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought it was rubbish. The second, um, the second, the second coming. <laughs> no, I do want to. I do want to just address the pool. Address in the room. something that it was my idea to get Paul on the podcast in the first place. I don't think I've addressed that on air. So that I I do actually take credit for that. But you're the one who's salty about Paul being on the episodes. I think Joe. No, did, no, I just. No, no. I don't think. I think Joe didn't think that Paul would go down so well, and then he did. Paul, go yeah, down I so thought. Well. I was like, "Yeah, get him on there. That made me look good." <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, we'll get we'll get no. Paul, we'll get Paul on. I but, won't be here. Everyone, will, everyone will be like, "Oh no, where's Joe? Where's but Joe?" I will say this is bleeding over into like other areas now as well. We had a team, a, a work meeting. Yeah. With the team. Yeah. Uh, a Zoom meeting mm -hmm. where it came up yeah. as a as a topic. Of the of the meeting with, with the team and everything, and I said that point that I just said. I was like, just to clarify, like uh, it was my idea to have Paul on the podcast actually. And George called me a liar in front of everyone, <laughs> which which isn't true. Like what I said was true. I wasn't lying. He instantly came in with, uh, no, you can't just lie to everyone. And I was like, throw me under the bus in Stay front of toxic. the whole team. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that is not the culture that we the have team in business. The yeah. team meeting uh, just devolved into a podcast, basically, for like four minutes. Oh yeah, just all of us just arguing. We can't help ourselves. Talk. You give us a microphone, and we just we just do this. Job yeah. done. You give me a platform, I'm, I must perform. <laughs> dance, monkey, dance. <laughs> so James, yes, another tank turned up. I noticed rise of pattern executioner. I couldn't help myself. He literally said, Joe. Last week we had an intervention when you weren't here, and I said, "James, how many tanks? Like this is getting ridiculous." And he's he doesn't he doesn't actually know how many he has. It's getting that out of hand. And he said, "But don't worry." He said, "But don't worry. I'm not buying any more. The tank is it's done now." And then three days later, what turns up? I'm gonna uh, yeah, but I <laughs> I've had this exact conversation with him about paint before. Yeah, I know. so I know how this conversation goes. Yeah, I know how this conversation goes. He agrees to it in the moment, and then. A couple of weeks down the line, there's another one. Out of production, forge roll, riser pattern, banquet, uh, extem, uh, executioner. Doesn't even know. Doesn't even Doesn't know. Even know. He's, He's got getting... so many buzzwords. Yeah. He can't yeah. keep on top of them. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can't help it. I like. Is this stuff. for the the audience? Most certainly is. Yes. It's quite handy actually because we're. Oh, oh, you've triggered something else as well. Guess what James said to me uh, yesterday. What he goes, George, I have a confession. I don't think that I'm going to get the uh, the Mordians done. In time for uh, in time for summer. Oh, it was July. the six month. Yeah. No, wasn't it? I, well, I'm I'm a Minanarium. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. It was, a, was it a six month? Is bear in mind. Thing? Just a, I just think it was July. I think June. I don't remember why. Because remember was, there was a whole by thing. The end of, by the on. end of June, Legion was it? Yeah, that was it. Yeah. Yeah. Something oh, like if I got till June Legion, that's even better. I get extra month because I, I said June initially. But if you're giving me July, no, then June I... then. No, no, no. no you, John can't just get <laughs> it just wrong said, and then you just, just take that as the new rules. You heard it here on the podcast. I was asking the question. I was asking the question. Um. Yeah, so June uh, was only for the infantry. So I so, just wanted uh, to say your legion, to yeah. be honest. <laughs> yeah. But how many have you painted? Tanks, three. No, no, no. How many infantry have you painted? Twelve. Oh. That's more than I thought. That's more than I thought, to be fair. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's exactly 10% of the whole force of infantry. So, mm. yeah. 
Well, you got Where's a, your seven now? <laughs> <are> you? <laughs> George is looking at that going, that's an army. Yeah, I know. Yeah. 12? Yeah. That's double mine now. Double What's mine? It, you're two playing two, an apocalypse two, game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe if I Photoshop about 60 other 12s in, yeah. then maybe, yeah. yeah. No, um, yeah, I've got two commanders done now uh, and I've painted my first squad. So, yeah. Be nice. Yes. But the good news for me is for every tank he paints, he buys another one. So it's just getting, it's no, just, no, just yeah, kicking yeah, yeah. the can. Further so was there actually, the was there like a wager or anything? On no, 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 like no, bragging, no. Right? He no. wishes there was, yeah, but it's yeah. not now. But yeah. currently I'm winning that race. So it's It'd fine. Be such, I, you wouldn't even get good odds on that. Because if you was going to bet that James wouldn't finish something by a certain date, everyone's like, well, obviously. But do you know what though? I think there is potentially a bit more at stake here than, than we're looking at. Because one of James's key points that we've battled previously is how... Um, making these little deals and 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 setting deadlines and stuff like that is the number one thing to motivate yourself and you will get it done and it will benefit you. So Unless you come he, into the office and say, by the way, I'm not getting it done in time. If, just he, doesn't, so you know. if he doesn't get well, it done. Well, I, 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 I just thought that... Then it kind of unravels his whole... You know, his whole thought process. Right, no so it's pressure. Quite, it's no, actually no, quite no pressure. No, I'll get it done. It's I'll actually it done. quite uh I'll get it done. So the deal. thing is, I, I reckon I can batch batch the rest. I reckon I can do it in quite a quite a prompt time frame. So. Can I make a prediction? Hmm. What when is the actual it was the end of June? End of June, yeah. End of, end of June. June. Not June. I reckon June. I reckon as we come into June, it's gonna look impossible. It's gonna look like there is no way. Hmm. And we're the writing's gonna, on the wall. We're laughing. We oh the podcast begin the this podcast begin the June is going to be brilliant <laughs> because it's like oh can you believe it? Look, he's only painted twenty infantry, whatever, and then he'll have like two weekends on the spin where he gets two hours sleep, and then he gets to the end of June and he's going to have done it. I'm telling you, that's what's going to happen. That's what happens every time. I, he's going to have he's going to have rebasing them. <laughs> he's going to have family over and they're going to get roped into basing them and the stuff dogs like that. are going to like, be like putting the texture yeah. paint no, they'll yeah, be yeah. digging up the basing material in the garden yeah there you yeah. go yeah. Yeah. yeah that's what's that's what's going to happen that's my prediction I would just say for the record I'll get it, it doesn't count if he starts cheating and enlisting others to... no outsourcing yeah no outsourcing no conscription okay. yeah no no, I, no I'll get it done I'll even it done. without that I genuinely think that's how it's going to go I'll get it done it's going to look like absolutely no chance and then before you know it I just for the record by the way if I recall correctly, there was no bet on my side. James just said he was going to... James just threw himself like under the bus. Potentially. Yeah, but I need there to was do no, that. There was I no need... talk of me getting, oh, George is going to get his arm. Like, I've, I've got nothing. To, I've got, I haven't got nothing to do. Yeah, but I need I to just do said, that. I've always said that I'm a slow painter. I ain't getting there. Yeah, well, should I... we add that in now then? Do you want to... When well, are you I'm... getting your blood angels? No There's more? no chance. I think... Here's, here's what I want. In July, in the middle of Jalegion, <laughs> I want... You two to play a game against each other. There is zero no chance with your game. fully there painted no chance. with no your chance. fully painted army. No chance of a game. I don't I even own. I don't even own an army. My ga my gaming days are over. I've never I've never played forty k. I don't even own an army. I've just got like a couple of boxes of blood angels. Yeah, but you're building an army, aren't you? Yeah, like over the course of the next like ten years, probably. No, no. My as I said, my gaming days are over. That's it. End of like I I, I don't really love that you said that like a washed up skateboarder. Yeah, no, oh, those days yeah. are behind me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I just I just don't I just don't. It doesn't for me. It's not the thing I'm interested in anymore. Painting is. Oh right, well, so. we'll just set it up as if it's a game. You don't actually have to play. Yeah, but that's what you I'll, can roll dice if you want. That's what I'll just roll. I'll play. Yeah, let me play a game with both of your. <laughs> I'll play against myself. Yeah, um, it could be like a, when you have like that chessboard and you like spin it around. All right, all right. Take the gaming thing out of it. Mm. In the middle of July, I think we should be able to take a, a like a an army a, a battle picture. Mm. Right, I'm going to go. On so this, there needs to be a substantial enough amount to take a battle picture of your blood angels against your. I'm, I'm going to. That's what I would right, say. So I'm going to say this right. He's now. so worried no, no, about no, it. No, no I'm going to. I'm going to set myself set myself a target and hit it. I'm going to paint them audience for the end of June and I will do a showcase video about them plus also some tanks in July. Very nice. Well, actually, I'm sort of, sorry, I'm like vaguely remembering now. Wasn't it something like he was only going to get the tanks done? No, infantry. No, it was infantry. Oh, it was get all the infantry yeah. done yeah. and then sort of the Yeah, tanks. in fairness, he always specified he wouldn't have the tanks done. Yeah. But I'm going to, okay. but for, but I thought for, it was the other way around. But for Julegion, the addition to the infantry will be some tanks and then I'll do a showcase. Well, Julegion, yeah, that would work because it's exactly. heresy stuff, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Okay. 
Okay. And then August is humans. So you can get some more inventory done. Yeah. All right. Don't set the bar too high. I've got, and then I've got other things. September I've got, I've got other, is... I've got, I've got, you start your towel army. I've got other painting, other painting things to sort out for this year anyway. So... Yeah, that's the, the big kicker for this is he's decided he's going to take a load of competition entries on to push in the mornings back. Do a morning competition entry, surely. One of my tanks will be, yes. Yeah, there you go. Look at this, solving problems. It's Efficiency. good to have you back, Joe. Yeah. Just, uh, just yeah. solving all the problems that we've caused. The thought of using an airbrush to paint your miniatures can seem daunting. We see them used all the time in videos and tutorials on YouTube, but how do you start? There's an overwhelming amount of choices to make, like what compressor should you buy and which airbrush is right for your needs? These are questions we hear all the time from new painters, which is why we decided to partner with Everything Airbrush to create the ultimate bundle kits to get you started. These bundles were hand-picked, built upon equipment we and our artists here at Siege have been using for years, so we can stand by its quality, durability, and dependency. Whether you want an affordable entry point or a professional-grade setup, we have you covered with airbrushes and compressors that are perfectly paired to complement one another. The kits also include all the hoses, fittings, and accessories you need so you can get going straight out of the box. And best of all, all of the items included in the kit are from brands you can trust like Harder and Steenbeck and Sparmax. Even if you're already an airbrush user, Everything Airbrush is still the best place to shop for all of your maintenance products, replacement parts, paints, and equipment. They have a huge inventory no matter what you need. With speedy delivery and excellent service, it's no wonder why they boast a five-star rating on Trustpilot. To order your kit now, head to our affiliate link in this episode's description or go to everythingairbrush.com. Okay, we've got a couple of topics this week. Uh, first of all, it is March for McCrag, so we're going to be going through all of the wonderful entries that we've had for the community at the end of this episode. Uh, but first off, Games Workshop sent us some of the awesome new croup models. So we've had a couple of little challenges going around. We tasked the team with painting some of them in a bunch of different color schemes. Uh, Adam, our in-office painter, painted the fantastic one for the release day. And uh, we all chimed in a little bit as well, Joe, myself. Yeah. You, I'm sure you've got some like witty little quip to say about how I didn't quite finish my model or whatever. So I'll let you get that out of the way. Go. Okay. Well, it's quite, it's quite on brand. <laughs> you you painted a half a model and James didn't paint one at all. So I'd say. Oh, I would actually say. So we start. You want to start with mine? Yeah, we'll it's start not with the yours. Most, it's not the. No, we'll start with yours. It's not the most uh, enticing one to start with. Right. Although I would say actually, other than not finishing the model, I did stick to the brief a little bit more than. Than someone as we were supposed to paint uh, non box art, <laughs> come up with our own colours and everything, and we've ended Bless, up with a yeah, few. What, 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 we ended up with a few pale green ones. Uh, so not the variety we were looking for. But should we um, rewind a little bit? Let's talk about sort of the models as a whole. Yeah. Before we get into the painting too much. Yeah. Um, I'm not. I've never had particular like affinity for croup before. Um, but I saw these new models. I thought they would look really cool. Um. The originals are sort of before my time in the hobby. So this is kind of all new for me, I suppose. <laughs> that literally, that literally, literally could mean they were originally released in like 2016. Exactly. You'd be like, it's before my time. Yeah. Uh, these old people Long models. <laughs> yeah, these boomer models. But uh, <laughs> no, the thing that surprised me most actually was these models are massive. We've done some size comparisons with the with the studio ones, which I'll put on screen for people. But uh, yeah, they're, they're absolutely enormous, which is awesome. They've been the, the downtime has been spent in the gym by the looks of it. Yeah, so, yeah. No, they're they're great. Um, yeah, they are huge uh, compared to compared to various models that um, are quite sort of like synonymous within many ranges in forty k. Like they're yeah, they're, they're they're massive. I have always had a bit of a liking for crew, and actually, um, I think I mentioned before on one of the episodes I might have mentioned I, when I. I painted some Blackstone Fortress stuff and you get a crew uh, character in there. Was that their like first reintroduction? Of it was crew? a first, that yeah. was the first like, here's a new crew model. Here's what a new crew model might look like. Um, and that was the first one that I painted out of Blackstone Fortress because I just loved it. I thought it was really cool. And uh, for a while in my like little kind of group, it was actually a running joke at one point that... Um, so when I used to play Kill Team a lot, when Kill Team was first reintroduced and I had a Kill Team podcast, it was a running joke that I was going to make a crew Kill Team because at the time that was like ridiculous. The models were old. Mm. Um, and because I'd liked painting that model, it was like, oh, I might do a crew Kill Team. And the, the rules weren't great for them or whatever. Fast forward, like, and they actually released a crew Kill Team box, didn't they? Like not too long ago. Mm -hmm. So that was quite funny. And that was then the... That was a, the real like reintroduction of what new crew models might look like, I think. But yeah, the first one was the Blackstone Fortress thing. So I've always had this like 
sort of affinity for crew and i really like them as models and i like them as a, the design of them and stuff but because the models were all quite old they always put me off uh committing anything to them so i was i was buzzing for this uh yeah this release do you want to talk about your uh painting process then how you tackled yours yeah so um i actually one thing i will say is i really enjoyed painting it as you pointed out it's i think you 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 assessed about 75 percent finished which uh yeah I'd, I'd probably agree with but the um i really enjoyed painting it and i think it's there it was quite a similar it feels similar to painting um the cruel boys yeah stuff yeah. it's very similar i can see that it's a very similar feel um and i enjoy painting those and enjoy painting orcs quite a lot so it's a it's a very similar thing where it's like mostly that sort of flesh that's on show although with these and the cruel boys it's like the flesh gets a bit like because they're like skinny there's like more bone poking out so it gets a bit sharp yeah do you know what i mean I like know what mean. um whereas with like big 40k orcs a lot of that's just like muscle or whatever so it's all round they're stuff. not super muscly in like the volumes of the limbs but you can see there's kind of like sharp angular sort of like knee joints yeah them. which i actually quite like because it gives you the opportunity to do some more solid edge highlights that you might not do on a 40k orc or like an ogre type thing or something like that where it's just flesh um so one of the things i really wanted to try actually was i've never really used a color primer and just gone with that um like one of the, we talk a lot about like obviously army paint to do color primers gw uh, color forge we mention all the time but i only ever really used a black primer um and i have had when colorforge first came out i kind of bought a few different ones but didn't really use them mm -hmm. um so i had a red colorforge primer which is supposed to match my fist in red so i was like this would be a cool opportunity we want to do some wacky color schemes show people some different color schemes you can do so i was like i'll do a an almost i almost was treating it like i was painting a blood letter or something like that. Very kind similar. Of, that kind of red. Like, yeah. yeah. It instantly like screamed blood <clears throat> letter aesthetic to me. Yeah. That was kind of the the vibe. Um, that, so what I actually did was I literally just did, used the red spray from uh, Colourforge, which is, I think it's called like sanguine red or something. Mm -hmm. um, just over the plastic. I used it as a primer. I didn't prime black first. I told this to James and he like, <laughs> he like, no. All the hairs went up on the back of his neck. <laughs> um, but I just wanted to, it was a test really. It was like a, we've had conversations before about, is it really, is, uh, are these really a primer? What What is an actual primer? Like, will it work? Like all that We've had a stuff. few little chemistry discussions on uh, past episodes about whether spray paints and spray primers and where they cross over and if it's technically a primer. But yeah. I think and the sort of conclusion of that, just for if, if anyone hasn't caught that episode, I think our sort of general conclusion was it's probably fine. Yeah. Yeah. Most yeah. of the time, it's going to be fine. There are certain technical elements that the manufacturers have to use if they want to call it a primer, though. Yeah, but not to getting. rehash that conversation too much. But we've all, we've all said that some actual primers, particularly with the airbrush, tend to not be very strong mm -hmm. compared to a spray can that isn't advertised as a primer as such. Tends to be really strong. So it's not necessarily that because you say one or the other. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying like the the. The upshot was that just cause originally I think we were all like, oh, if it's called, make sure it's called a primer. Mm -hmm. But then what we came to the conclusion was, well, there is certain boxes you can tick to be called a primer. It doesn't necessarily mean the one that isn't called a primer isn't as useful. Yeah. But anyway, I, I believe the, uh, I probably shouldn't go off the top of my head, but I believe the Colorforge ones do actually state primer as well. But I went straight over the plastic with the red. And one of the things I really wanted to test was just how much of a color match to Mephiston Red it is. Because even with within brands, sometimes I have this issue where like the, the actual paint doesn't match the spray. So the aim was actually to spray red and then um, go over with Mephiston mm -hmm. to like either with the airbrush or just with a brush or whatever, just so that I, in case I make any mistakes, I can tidy up again. Mm -hmm. And I did one leg with Mephiston and I was literally like, it looks exactly the same. Like there is, I could not tell the difference other than the actual like finish, finish yeah. where um, 
the colourful stuff is obviously really matte. Um, other than the finish, the actual colour was the same. And I was like, as soon as I put a varnish over this, it's going to be, same. it's going to look the same. Like, yeah. Um, and because even, even within the finish, it wasn't actually that different. Um, so I was like really impressed by that to the point of I just didn't bother doing the Mephisto all over the rest of the model. I just went on to shading and, and stuff like that. Um, That's good for an uh, efficiency standpoint. You could def definitely extrapolate that to doing an army. Like, exactly. Save a ton, yeah. a ton of time. I was actually also, not that this is my plan and I'm not going to rope myself into any like six month army challenges and things like that, but I was <laughs> approaching it with a thing of like, okay, if I had to paint 30 of these, mm -hmm. You know what would I want to do, kind of thing. Yeah. We just had conversations with Peachy about that sort of thing, and 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 Liam on on previous episodes. So that was kind of fresh in my mind as well. It's kind of fun when you like accidentally learn stuff like that because this was effectively like treated as its own independent project. It's good that you're still learning things from it that would be useful elsewhere. And it wasn't like this one exercise in a vacuum of I painted this crude model and then that was the end of it. Yeah, you still got something out of it. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely made me more comfortable with using a coloured spray can primer as a base coat i'm surprised you haven't done that before yeah i would have thought i would have thought just never done. really like i think i had a f couple of successful experiences with that back in the day and i had a couple of negative experiences with that so what would you have done previously you would have sprayed the whole thing black and then with a brush just painted on the mephist and red probably airbrush okay yeah, probably airbrush um i just always i was always like i, I mean i only even tried this because i had the can there sure i always kind of resented the idea of like I could just airbrush over the black, so why am I going and buying a waste of money yeah. red can yeah. to airbrush over the red can? Do you know what I mean? So, but now from my experience, you'll know that that knowing, would save you a ton of time. Exactly. Yeah. If I was doing an army, and I could, so part of the reason going way back, part of the reason I failed with that Necron army project is because I sprayed, I, I primed everything black. And I wanted black armor, but I still like airbrushed black over everything so that it was the same black. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's like a minor OCD type thing or whatever, <laughs> but, um, and I think had I not done that whole slog of effectively spraying an entire army twice, the same color, I might have not been as beaten down to like, I don't want to look at this thing again. Yeah. Um, it's so, funny. Maybe we'll have to talk about it on a future episode, but airbrushes are seen as this like speed tool that they really aren't in a lot of cases. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're definitely, we can get onto that. But like, So anyway, yeah, so it, it's really cool. that it, uh, It's opened that door for me, really, um, which is going to be really handy with, uh, you know, I talk a lot about the Underworld war bands that I want to uh, paint and stuff like that. But yeah, actually, in terms of the models and everything, um, really, really enjoyed the process of painting them. Like, I do wish I could have spent a little bit longer on it and... And maybe approached it with that mindset from the start. Like it's one of those. I can definitely see myself picking up a character or two. Like definitely enjoy them. Yeah, the the details on them are fantastic as well. Right, the the refinement of the sculpts is just is mega. Even on the box standard box standard crew infantry in the box, um, they're they're phenomenal. Like they're really 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 good. And the characters are just like the one I painted and the one I half painted is is. Is, yeah, it's mega. So, yeah. Do you want to dive into a process? So it's on screen for the listeners. Do you want to dive into a process a little bit more for how far you've got uh, the rest <coughs> of the model? So with the skin? Um, to be honest, yeah, the skin was the only thing that's had any real time put on it. Um, I did that with a base coat. So it's pretty much all just the spray directly, the... Uh, the Sanguine red. Yep. And uh, then I just mixed some... I think I'm. I should have brought my like little note list thing. But I'm Where's pretty your sure. Your journal? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I don't have my journal. Um, so I mix like corn red into some black just to make it even more darker. Mm -hmm. um, I, I eventually, I have this really, I have this issue all the time, and we've spoken about it previously. Where like with how much contrast to put on, um, because. I would like think, oh yeah, I need to make the the recesses quite dark or something like that. And especially on natural things like that, I'll always then be like, oh, I've gone too dark. I'll go back, and then I'll go, I'll go back, and with the base coat and glaze that, or I'll put some shades over that again. I'll just find myself constantly going backwards and forwards on, on like, oh, I've done it too dark. Oh, I need to brighten it up. Oh, now I need to darken it down again, kind of thing. Um, so I did that a bit. So the, the, the shading is somewhere between some kind of like corn red, black, Mephiston red mix. Um, 
And then I just kind of high, did like a bit of a like soft glaze type highlight on some of the volumes. I didn't want to get fully like volumetric highlighting completely. Just to remind you a little bit with that shade, was that done like as a wash that you made or was that? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like most mostly as a wash. There's only on these models, there's only like some, some like really, there's only a couple of actual like deep crevices, if you like, like on the if hands. If any, and, really. Yeah, yeah, the they're, feet. Not, they're not that, that, like they've got a lot of detail on them, but they're not like, the, the, there's not like loads of sculpted deep areas on them. Like yeah, the, the hands and the feet have some deeper recesses and the arm joins do leave a gap, which I kind of attempted to smooth over the top and leave the bottom half has almost like a bit of a recess in itself. Um, on that note, actually, they go together really well, but the 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 gap or seam line type thing on the on the shoulders and everything was quite annoying because that actually stopped that stopped me being able to do um, a TSA a temporary sub assembly, <laughs> um, which I wanted to do. I wanted to be able because I didn't want the the gun blocking everything sure um so i was gonna do that but if i wanted to smooth over those gaps i couldn't really do that otherwise i'd be painting it and then having to put it on and smooth the gaps over kind of thing there's like this infantry box as a whole is quite interesting because it's not they're all very different poses as you like with marines for example they're all pretty much your bog standard like there'll be some variation mm. but these are all in like they're all charging in different directions, holding the weapons in different ways. I think so unit, it makes them quite unique to each other, which is really nice. The unit looks very organic, like to match the, obviously the actual models. It's not like obviously they're heavily armored troops. The silhouettes individually are quite different as well, which is quite nice. So I can imagine if you have multiple versions of the box, you, your force isn't going to look so cookie cutter by that way of doing it because each unit will have a lot, of, a lot of variation of pose, which is quite good. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, no, but yeah, just to recap to the red. Um, Kind of highlighted back up a little bit volumetrically by mixing some Evil Suns Scarlet, is it? Yep. Into Mephisto Red on some of the raised areas, the muscles and things like that. Um, and then catching some of the sharper edges on the face. And then um, final or only real actual edge highlight that I did was like mixing... Um, Wild Rider? No, what's the, I went a step above on the actual orange... Oh, uh, Troll Slayer. Troll Slayer. Yep. Put some Troll Slayer into Evil Sons and started doing that. It was still really soft, to be honest, but probably would have, yeah, I mean, eventually you'd want to take it a little bit further maybe, but um, it's quite nice. It was a, it's a fairly standard red recipe, isn't it? It was quite yep. fun to paint. What's your uh, plan for the beak, might I ask? Oh, so I, I went a bit back and forward on the beak. So the beak at the minute looks like a darker red. Mm -hmm. Um because I wasn't sure if that was just from where it's at in the painting process or if that was the color you chose. The color you chose. I'd kind of, so I haven't really properly highlighted it or anything because I kind of left it as it was. Originally, I, I did like a black beak um, and then it looked weird. So I, then I just painted like a darker red over it. But yeah, it was kind of undecided really. I think on a, on a lot of them, you see the, the beak is just the same color as the skin. But I think that's because the skin tends to be this like neutral color. So then the beak looks okay in that color. Mm. When you're doing like this red or brighter colors and things, it might not look as good. So yeah, not really, not really too sure on that. And then just went standard metallics on like the armor, uh, standard metallic on the gun. All the metallics on there are literally just base coated, um, washed, and then random little sketchy little highlights just dabbed on, picked out. Um, the wood for the gun just hasn't been touched. The wood for the gun's been like base coated in some Vallejo brown. Is that Vallejo is it it's Vallejo brown? is it going to be like one of those brown colours where it's like some weird specific version of brown that's <laughs> yeah, different yeah. to the other weird specific yeah. version of brown um, yeah. oh no it's not dark I don't know, brown I don't, it's brown I, dark like. I'm afraid I don't have the serial number off the top of my head yeah. but I'm pretty don't sure it's the nine digit code I'm pretty sure it's just called flat it's, brown it's or something five, actually. Yes. Yeah, yeah I think it's called, called flat brown maybe that could be wrong um <laughs> Uh, yeah, so the, the things that I was mostly undecided on and still are as yet is like the kind of beads, um, well, like the hair type thing. Like, the, yeah, the, it's, got, like, it's, got like, it's got little braids in it. Like, yeah, yeah, type. but like the hair like growth thing. Yeah, but they've also is. got like the same sort of little like They have it all bits. over the, yeah, they're like spikes, aren't they? They're just like, yeah. Um, Semi-porcupine-esque. Yeah, so it was kind of undecided where to go with that really. I'm not sure what 
I quite like this scheme as a whole. Mm. Being honest, like where even where it's at, I would say that this is like pretty much gaming ready, isn't it? Yeah, like, I mean, I'd be more than happy to to game with it if I was doing an army, like I say. But um, yeah, I was quite happy to do. That's see, quite the nice thing with doing like an effective color like that is it's like kind of enough to carry the rest of the yeah, model. Like, if it's a bright, yeah, I mean, anyone that's going to be looking at a unit, a tenant, then they're just going to be looking at that it's bright red um, crew, aren't they? They're not going to mm. be looking at the finer details as much, probably. Um, the eyes as well, I just did like a little dab of, I think I, I did actually base coat them like green and everything. But then by the time, because of the way the eyes are sculpted, by the time you put a, final dot to make them look like they're kind of glowing a little bit or something you don't really see see any of that but um nice, yeah really fun fun model though fun little challenge um and i do yeah i do i do think they're really cool models in the in the box um what about you how did you get on with yours um so i've spoken on a few previous episodes about this idea of it's funny because we're coming off the back of me talking about doing blood angels and spending like 100 hours a model but i've been trying to get more okay with like not going crazy on everything it's kind of like a similar thing like i was saying when what were you we talking about with peachy and, and exactly stuff like that. yeah and that was in part from that conversation that we had with peachy so i think it's a, it, that conversation has made me realize how much of a skill that is yeah or to, to, to dial back and to not actually just yeah. to be okay yeah, with it yeah. like to just, mentally to just yeah. to just yeah. knowingly dial back because i genuinely think that's a reason why my painting hasn't progressed as much as it has or why I'm not painting as much as I maybe were at one point was because it was this like reverse, I don't know, like thing of, um, I spoke about like the lazy perfectionism thing before where it's like, because I couldn't paint it to look like the box, it was a waste of time trying to paint it at all because I want it to look like the box. Yeah. So, so getting around that and having this thing of like, I'm actually okay with, this model being uh, my aim with this model is for it to be less than that quality the and, the, isn't so and, high and, it, and the biggest thing that i took from that what peachy said was like he's not paint in that situation he's not painting to the quality on the box he's painting to this thing of having an army done yeah and that's it yeah and that, uh, yeah that was a really cool thing that i took from it as well yeah yeah so in the spirit of that i thought this model is a great opportunity to do a sort of I don't want to call it a speed paint, but like a much more restricted, like limited time spent on the model as a whole. Um, and the reason I think these models lend themselves really nicely to that is because there's a lot of like softer detail. So because mm. they they haven't got loads of stuff on them. So there are some models that are very fleshy, but they're still wearing like armor plates and whatnot. Whereas with these creep models, like if you look at them, they're pretty much just skin with like like a little strip of fabric here and there. Do you know what I like as well? Just to cut in on that point. Um, a lot of the extras, because there's not as much uniformity with them mm. as there is with Marines, like you were saying, even with the poses. I, I've spoken before about how I don't like putting all pouches and stuff on Marines because it's like extra work and <laughs> yeah, stuff yeah. like that. With these, like, there's not, even like having a shoulder pad is like sporadic. Yeah. Like you could probably just leave the shoulder pad off if you want. It's a bit That's a whole more... bit of armor not to paint. You can leave the pouches off if you want. It's, it's like, quite it's quite good because then if you like, if you do, you say, if you like, oh, it's loads of organic and I do want a little bit of something different, you can stick maybe the pad on one or two and then you can make more of a feature of that on the model. It feels like more that. intentional rather than a, you could choose to not put it on if you couldn't be bothered to paint it. It's like a, this is the option. Now it's like, options. Yeah, yeah, they just, they might just look like that. Yeah, like exactly. it's, it's, so if you really wanted to cut some corners, yeah, just leave yeah. the shoulder pads off, leave some of the things off, and then you've got mostly just the skin yeah. tone. So I chose to leave the the shoulder pad on, but like you said, I didn't put any of the extra like pouches on or anything like that. Um, which so, so when you break it down and look at the model in that sense, basically when you approach it from painting, and I think this would be like fantastic for doing armies because it would be so easy to just go ahead, go in head first. You haven't got a lot of things slowing you down, like especially at the base coating process. It's not like you've got to block in like a major secondary color. Like once you've done the skin, you've got like the beak and like a little sash of fabric and like a little the hair. bracelet or something in the hair. But it's not, they're like small details and not significant portions of the model. So yeah, in the spirit of this sort of like speed painting, but still like painting it nice. I wasn't like in a rush. I didn't set like a time limit. I just knew that, yeah, I'm going to do this in a couple of evenings and I'm not going to paint like full beans and try and limit myself somewhat. Um, so this was my attempt at that. I'll put it on screen uh, for the listeners. Uh, Went with green. Yeah, I will just point out. I will just point out that 
uh, one of the one of the part of the brief with this whole challenge um, was everyone paint like a different color. I had a little chart that I made of like colors that people were Did doing. Did you try to organize it so that everybody was? Yeah, painting? I mean, I picked red. Yep. Um, Which is Adam and James uh, were doing blue, and we'll get to why they were doing the same um, once we talk about Adam's one. Um, we've ended up with a couple of green. Uh, green ones that we're going to go over. I don't know how that happened. So but, um, this, let, is, this is, this is the, your equivalent to my, uh, what's the Genesis what's, chapter. This is your, this is yeah. your Genesis chapter. Not to yeah. mention like, not only did multiple of them end up being green, but like, it's not even like, multi, oh, like, oh, we've got multiple um, purple ones or something where, where it would have at least been part of the brief of like, don't paint it like the box art, but <laughs> pale green is one of the colors that they are on the box art. So Didn't read this is going to sound like total BS. What do you <laughs> say? <laughs> oh, he's caveating it straight away. I'll be the judge of that. Yeah. <laughs> so I knew I wanted to do, I was originally going to do like a very, very pale green. And I mean like a very, very pale, not like the box art. And in fairness, mine isn't super close to the box art in terms of the color cue, but it is close. I'll, I'll acknowledge that. Yeah. So this wasn't entirely intentional. And I genuinely hadn't looked at, but like, I didn't look at these since they came out. And Adam gave the model to me like in a little Ziploc. So I didn't even see the instructions or the box or anything. No, I never did. And I hadn't either. seen like what the actual GW ones looked like in ages. And I, I base coated the model in like a very, very light green, like I wanted it. And by the time I started highlighting it and I put my shading on, which I'll speak about the process in a minute, it ended up looking quite dark green. And there was a middle point in the process where I was like, wasn't this meant to be like, a unique, a unique off the wall. Off the, I was like, yeah. oh. So, so you, yeah. had, you had the perfect opportunity to then add like some kind of markings or some kind of like like pattern in. Well, if I had more time, I probably would have done that, James. But yeah. like I said, I wanted to do this sort but of like. Couldn't be bothered. Couldn't be bothered. That's yeah, it. just yeah. just went box box art <laughs> colors. Job done. Didn't read the memo. Yeah, it was. Just, yeah, well, that, still, I, I don't know what to say. I, I, I don't know what to say. I'll take I can't a, talk. No, but, I just yeah. I don't really get. Normally you're like the golden boy, like, oh, I've, <laughs> oh, I've had mine ready for six weeks and here it is and it looks like... Actually, in It fairness, looks like the box art on, and it's spot on, on quality. And Mine's it's the like, only one that's painted. You haven't finished yours. James is, didn't do one is, at all. This is what I mean. Like, you're, Excuse you're, me, I've got colour on mine. I've concentrated more on the base than anything, but yeah, like, okay. Uh, who are you to judge whether mine's finished? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> who are let's you not, to judge another man's let, art? Let's not bring up um, the front of a chaos model shall <laughs> yeah, we yeah. Uh, <laughs> all I'm saying is yeah I just wanted to bring it up because normally and I imagine as you will be next month with painting challenges and things like that you're like oh here it is it's done and like me and James haven't even started yet so if I see any <laughs> dent in the armour I will zone in on it okay well I'll speak about the few uh, however it does look very nice it does Thank look you. good yeah Thank it does you. look good I'll yeah. speak about the few uh, shortcuts that I took in that sort of speed painting process uh, following the brief being one of them. Choosing green. <laughs> yeah. So first of all, I base, I base coated all the model in this sort of pale green. Should have gone paler. Fair enough. <laughs> Different colour. Paler green. Different colour. But uh, one of the things I really wanted to try with this was using contrast paints in more of their, I don't want to say in the traditional sense because I didn't, put, do, didn't, didn't do it over like a white or like a warm off white where you just slap the full pigment on. But I knew that this model would lend itself to, I guess, using contrast paints as more of a heavily pigmented wash. Yeah. Um, and I knew I wanted to try that. And I knew this model would be perfect for that because it's that kind of like soft detail. There's not really any flat areas. So you know that it's all going to flow into the recesses nicely. And if you dilute it with the contrast medium, it's not going to be this like super harsh, stark thing. Now, I could try and play this off as like some sort of color theory genius, but I, ac <laughs> I accidentally didn't do what I was meant to do and it worked out for the better. So I've done, I done it all green. And I was going to use a purple wash because Paul was talking about going mental with color on last week's episode. And I thought, you know what? That'd be fun because it's kind of complimentary colors. I thought I'll have some interest in the shadows rather than just doing hang, like a brown. Hang on a second. Hang on. So you had a second opportunity to add a different color to the miniature. Yeah. I and, love you, and you went, nah, it's okay. I, just <laughs> I love the, the prompt to go mental with color has still led you to a pale green box. So let me go into that. So... I put on a purple. What, by the way, do you know what specific contrast yeah, was you the, were using? It was Magos purple, I think is how you say it. What about the green? Uh, so there wasn't a green. So the green was like a the oh, green you didn't base do the green coat. No, okay. no, no. So that's what I'm saying. So I've done the green base coat and I wanted to use the contrast as like a pigmented wash sort of thing. Thinking that I'll put the purple on and it'll be like this nice rich purple in the shadows and it'll look quite visually interesting. And I think you could, I was thinking if it is too purple, I can kind of play it off as like markings or that's just how they look because they're like, you know, sci-fi creatures. Well, that'd be cool. <laughs> but I put it on. 
and the because I thinned it down, and I guess the the hues just like cancelled each other out per like perfectly. Mm. So I ended up with this is like dark green but slightly purple brown wash, which looked like I'd done it on purpose. So yeah. it didn't really do what I was aiming for. It ended up looking pretty good, I think. Yeah. But uh, I was it was kind of a shot in the dark, and it I guess paid off. It wasn't quite what I was going for. I was thinking there'd be a bit more purple, and it ended up a lot sort of more brown just because it's, like I said, the colors were just sort of seemingly canceling each other out kind of perfectly. So I think if I'd used a different contrast paint or even a different green, it might have had more of the effect of I was expecting, but I call that like a happy accident. So I just sort of went yeah. with it. Some, sometimes they're the, best, they're the best sort of discoveries that you make is, is, I always say, it's like the experimenting, like it's just trying something and you find out something that works amazingly. Um, yeah, as I said, it's, it looks great. The model looks mental. Yeah, uh, the green I used was Death World Forest, I think. And then it was highlighted with Strachan green, I think is what it is. Yeah. yeah. They're, I think quite, they're quite these saturated greens. To be fair, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I think it's cool that we've both kind of had this like little minor experimental test with it and both kind of gone, oh, that was good. Yeah. That was cool. Yeah, exactly. Should try that. Yeah. Everyone should try those. Yeah. If you're a long-term listener of the podcast, you'll know how important it is to have the right tools to aid you in your painting. And if there's one piece of equipment that I could never live without, it's my Onyx lamp from Native Lighting. It doesn't matter what brush or paints you have if you can't see what you're doing in the first place. The Onyx is the perfect lamp for miniature painting because it's super bright, 2200 lumen LEDs cast soft and diffused light on your models without any harsh shadows. And its daylight balanced color temperature of 6500K gives you the confidence that the colors you are painting are accurate. As someone with a very small hobby desk, by far my favorite feature though is its articulating arm, which clamps to the side of your desk, maximizing your workspace. It's also super adjustable so you can sit comfortably in the perfect painting position without sacrifice. It also folds up into a compact shape, which is great if you like to travel to paint with your friends. To upgrade your setup and order yours now, head to siegestudios.co.uk forward slash shop or head to the link in this episode's description. Um, there was a few other sort of shortcuts, I guess I'll say that I took. Um, the main one being for all of the metallics, I wanted to do it as this sort of like weathering can be both quick and slow kind of depending on how you approach it it's often used as a sort of speed shortcut because it doesn't have to look perfect because that's kind of the point right so what i wanted to do was have this kind of secondary color of black but let's try and incorporate the metallics in there so i've done this like metallic chipping highlight on all of the black areas to make it look like i guess the black paint has been like chipped off and that's the sort of metal underneath but the biggest benefit of that is because i was using viejo's 950 black which covers so well out the bowl so it's basically just a one coat of black and then i went in with uh some of my scale color metallics and i took my normal like brush that i would use for edge highlighting with and before i put it on i just dried it out on some uh kitchen paper paper towel so it was not like not like i was dry brushing but like i guess just wicked out just a little bit of that moisture just sort of touch the tip to it just just pull out any moisture that was in it and then when you start edge highlighting it you get this sort of broken effect where it's like, I'd say you get like 85, 90% coverage, but it's not so much about the fact of it covers the edge perfectly because you still get it like the whole way down. But within that, it kind of has these like jagged edges. It's not like perfectly smooth. So that worked out quite nicely. I was quite pleased with that. Um, and then when it came to the browns, just going really quick, like just with a, just with a brown and a wash, quick highlight, pretty quick and dirty. But uh, yeah, I think that it would be very easily evolved into an artist game. I think overall on the model, I must have spent probably three and a half, four hours. And that was kind of because I went into it without a plan. And that was sort of the point. If I'd sat and planned this out, I probably could have done it in less time. Um, and now I've done this, I suppose I could do another one in less time. And if you was batch painting this, it would work really well for that because if you're using the contrast paints or if you're using a wash or whatever, like batching this, like the model would be dry by the time you got back around. With this, I was kind of having to like jump to other details because you can use like a hairdryer to speed up drying, but I often find that that gives me shiny areas or some pooling or you kind of like end up baking it while it's drying and it doesn't quite go how you want but if you was doing a batch obviously you could just jump onto the next model by the time you got back around but what i was doing was trying to find like other stuff to do on the model so while i was painting it, it was a bit more sporadic of like okay well i'll paint the beak and then i'll paint there was kind of no order to it but that was just sort of as a try and not to waste any time um whereas it could have been like more efficient and more streamlined with it like okay now i'm gonna do all the black and then all the black color and then all the skin but yeah uh so that was my process for that really yeah yeah nice um obviously we had some of the other team paints up yep. as well 
So should we go should we go into the first one? Because James, you was going to paint the same color scheme as Adam. Correct. So yeah. I'll put Adam's one on the screen that we painted for the uh, yeah. NDA Shape date up. now. Yeah, so a Adam finished the character. Basically, what we're trying to do is Adam and, and James came up with this color scheme, which kind of, I'll let James talk about in a second, but it, it kind of uh, nods back to an old codex scheme for crew. But we... We were obviously taking some of the infantry models out for of the box for this little challenge, but we wanted to have a unique, uh, like a, a unique and consistent color scheme to do the rest of the box in between Adam and James. So that's why James's was going to be the same as Adam's. Cool. Do you want to talk about the the scheme for that? Yeah. So when me and Ad talked about this, we were like, right, we really want to do something a little bit, a little bit nods, because obviously the release of a croup box is quite a quite a big thing considering that they didn't they they came out in dribs and drabs there's a couple of forge world bits back in the day there was obviously a couple of uh, the main kit kit obviously for for the infantry but they haven't had their own proper big release or their own main release and obviously this is quite quite a big thing for them and everyone who wanted a croup army can now can now do that which is great um so when me and ad spoke about what should we do as like a main kind of color scheme for the rest of the bits in the box we went straight to the OG very first Tau Codex when the when the faction was released, and it has some really good old color schemes of like Crute in there. Um, uh, so so we looked through and wanted something a little bit different. Obviously, didn't want green, didn't want red because you were doing it. Didn't want any of those colors. And there's a really good old. It's good. They looked through the brief and they went, "Oh, so and so is doing that color. I won't do that." And then they were like, "I oh, don't want to do it like the box box. It's it's, it's quite good, isn't it? Yeah, imagine that. <laughs> I, I learned from the Genesis chapter episode. Yeah, yeah James so, has spent his one of those, like, yeah. getting around the rules. So you're thing. not got, allowed anymore. Yeah. 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 I spent my one token pretty early in March. I've got to be a good boy for the rest <laughs> yeah. of the year. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Haven't spent mine yet. So, yeah. No. Um, uh, yeah, and there was a really cool blue scheme, uh, painting the old regal blue, uh, quite dark. And obviously with, with this... We wanted to do something a bit different. Um, so me and I just threw some ideas backwards and forwards and and, uh, and decided to go for blue for skin with quite a lot of high contrast, big tonal variants on the skin, um, and then stick to kind of like a bit of a primary uh, color triad. So like do like yellow quills, which I thought would be really cool. Like we were looking at like blue parrots and things like that, looking at how how they kind of like have the, 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 the plumage and stuff like that to see how the colors are done and all those kind of things. Um, and obviously because the blue it, it, it's, it's quite a cool color like we wanted the leather to be quite warm as well so we went for quite a, quite a warm rich reddish kind of brown leather on the model um, obviously the metal sections having a bit of a brownish tinge to them as well so they've got a little bit of like a little bit of you wouldn't expect crew to have like brand new pristine equipment so all the metals and stuff like that were quite worn quite age looking you know as if they'd had them for a long time um, and then yeah really wanted something a little bit different for the basing as well so so we because they're bright blue, um, we thought, well, putting like a, a, a more like a gray or a brown uh, base and corresponding base rim on them potentially might have not been the the best the best play considering that it had a lot of brown leather on them already. So, um, so we ran some ideas back and forth about sort of like alien world schemes. We came up with this really cool kind of like it's almost like a greenish like emeraldy marble kind of world kind of like that scheme the way adam painted the rock on that base is just so cool yeah it's sort of like glowing yeah mineral kind of yeah. thing he's done stuff like that before on some of the other models and i know we've we've well, i remember distinctly he'd done it on the underworlds i'm um, so glad you're about to say this. that's, that's yeah. exactly what i was about to say was there was a um underworlds uh warband um i'm oh, sorry i said kill team i meant for underworld um, yeah yeah um and he did like a custom color scheme on them. And it's so cool, but they include on, there's a rock that's quite prominent on one of the models. It's obviously and, levitating uh, kind of thing, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And he's, and he, the way he painted that rock is very similar. Yeah. It's, we, it's really we, cool. We, we, we the, the green scheme is just something a bit different. And like, yeah, yes, you could have gone more like a Mars esque because then it would have worked with the rest of the colors on there, a bit of a reddish kind of hue. But we just thought like the dark green emerald kind of like, we wanted an alien looking world basically. Because I think it kind of, Kind of in keeping with the, with the models, and wanted something that did contrast the model. Maybe didn't directly nod to any of the main colours that are on the miniature in some kind of colour relationship, but just something completely out there that was a bit different. It's nice as well because it's not like super distracting. No, it's, it's not. It's not exactly, this like big yeah. glowing focal point. No, and your eye is still drawn to the vibrant blue of the skin. Yeah. But then when you look at it for a little bit longer, you see like, oh, okay, that's what we did there. Yeah. So we went we went for kind of like a, a like majority kind of like 60, 65 percent kind of blue 
a bit of, obviously a, a lesser percentage yellow and then a tiny tiny percentage in the triadic relationship of the colors like so so the red is only noted on some of the spines and things like that if you look at the cape that he's wearing there's a couple of little bits of red splashes there um which was quite nice um the weapons as well kept them really utilitarian so like just literally basic metallics wood woods added some like subtle rust effects onto some of the metallics as well just some, like ivory on there as well yeah the, yeah the hilts added, added on some neutral tones just for like the wraps and things like that just so it's something that works with the rest of the palette but doesn't take away from the main color, color relationship um so he done that on that shaper um yes i didn't paint a model for this one unfortunately um i i um i really wanted to i fell in love with the flesh shaper when i saw it like super aggressive like attacking kind of pose like like lots of intent in the actual in the, in the pose i thought the head scarf thing was quite a cool thing as well um and and yeah, I I basically started doing the exact same scheme, following obviously all the colours that me and Adam decided upon for it. But I just, being frank, I just I I kind of got captivated by the base. I'm not going to lie. Like I went on this. I don't know what's going on. I've I've gone through some crazy basing things. Like on the corn one, I put a load of time into the base. On this one, I I, I made a base. I wanted to tell a bit of a story, like with the model and stuff. And and yeah, I just I just yeah, you'll see it. In, we'll put something up for March from Craig later that of like the base I've done. But I just got taken away by the base essentially yeah uh i i was gonna work the march from a crag thing into the base for the crew it is a shame that like more of these reveals haven't lined up to like our they like just i would like just like a couple of them to line up by accident i suppose you know we I mean? could have done because the spirit of the challenge is that you can just do a little part so we could have done like a helmet or something this is what i was gonna say i was gonna put a helmet like on the base or something but i was like that's just too obvious i've just yeah. stuck a helmet on the base yeah um if it's done like without intention and you kind of just do it for the sake of it uh, that, bit, yeah. retrospectively I, I did think um Literally yesterday, I was thinking, oh, it would have been quite cool to maybe put a helmet like on one of the mm. blades on the gun, because mm. oh, the crew have those guns where they've got the two blades coming off of them. And I was like, oh, it would have been cool to actually have like a helmet like stuck onto one of them. Yeah. Um, so yeah. But maybe I, next year. <laughs> um, I, I will be finishing the model though. Like I am. I, I was going to say, take, I feel like, like I yeah. Gonna I was going like, to say, oh, you got to finish. I haven't. It, I haven't stopped painting it. Like it's just, it's just literally like with all the stuff going on. Like you know, I just, I just haven't had a chance to put as many hours as I wanted into it. And 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 also, I wanted to have a comparable model with, with Adams as well. So we both had obviously the same, exactly the same scheme. The two characters, obviously, but just, yeah. just time slipped away for me, and, and I, I've invested way too much time on making and painting the base, unfortunately. But um, but uh, the 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 model's got like all the colours on in the right places and stuff. I just haven't done any of the any of the the sort of like contrast or or sort of like shading and and, and yeah. highlights and details and stuff. So, so I'll get it done. I, will I get do it done. love the colour scheme. Yes, I, I honestly we were, we were like we're gonna do old school codex, but a bit brighter. Make it more pro like yeah. primary color. Try it. Add some yellow on there because the yellow on the I think I'm sure the, the regal blue scheme's got yellow on it. But it's the yellow is the brightest point, and we wanted to kind of the skin to be just mm. as bright as the as the as the hair. Yeah. Um. Uh. We were talking about doing some kind of like avatar esque kind of like patterning on the on the thing, but I think because of the amount of tonal variance on the skin, there's quite a lot of dark areas where there are some sort of softer shadows and stuff. We really wanted high impact on the on the right areas. It's I'm intrigued the, to see that when it's on some of the other models though because this model has got a lot of extra detailing on it so when you see one of the more yeah. like infantry models where you can see more of the skin yeah, there's yeah. not all this extra leather and stuff i'm looking forward to seeing it on like the the crew tops, tops and stuff yeah. like that yeah yeah, yeah. they're, they're going to look amazing in it we'll yeah. either once it once it's done what well, i suppose we'll either do a, one of our showcase videos or put it in a roundup or something or if we don't then we'll we'll mention we'll, it on the we'll podcast yeah we'll, we'll, put some we'll, pictures up. We'll, we'll put some photos up they'll be on socials anyway so we'll get them on instagram and we'll get them on the siege instagram and on, on other places as well but that's at siege studios if you're not following us already on instagram yeah Check them out over there should we talk about some of the uh some of the other ones that the team done then yeah yeah so should, 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 we, we <laughs> should we do the should we do the green ones first yeah, <laughs> yeah should we group them all together okay well first one uh we have is paul former uh former guest of the show last week not familiar with <laughs> i don't really remember <laughs> Yeah, um, <laughs> he almost deserves this seat box. He, he finishes these every time. <laughs> every single time we do one of these challenges, Paul will just Paul show everyone up because he'll just turn. He'll come into the office with one just like done, just super nonchalant. Paul, Paul, like two days later, Paul will start after everyone. Yeah, and go. Um, yeah, yeah, go on in. I'll do it. I think I've got like a couple of. I've got a couple of afternoons, so yeah, I'll do it. And then he'll come in like two days later and be like, "Yeah, there you go. I've done that." And it's like the full model. And you're like, "Okay, brilliant." Uh, I've been I've been staring at mine for a week, but okay. 
Um, yeah, so it's on screen yeah. now for everyone. Done another, done another green scheme. Still, all jokes aside, I will say at least all the green ones, they are different enough. Yeah. In, yeah, it's quite, it's quite interesting to see that as well, actually, because everyone's kind of tackled the same color scheme in different ways. It's actually a, a good example of, yeah, how much variation you can get over. Because also, when you look at the box art, similar again to the Cruel Boys, they are kind of designed to have these different shades yeah. throughout a squad. So it does show how, even if you did want to stick to green, you can get these different, uh, well, it, different even, hues. Even in the unit, like the box art one, you've got so many different so many different tones in that unit, just in the paint job. Like the Evermetal team have really thought about it. Like it, It's almost like, the way I looked at it, it was almost like there's like you've got, imagine all the crew come from one planet. There's different regions of crew. In, in like it's like they're all mixed up it's yeah, quite, it's quite like, cool it, yeah it's um it is like i say it's similar to the cruel boys because they do it similar with the cruel boys where like they're certain in a, even within a squad um or even orcs on a greater scale they they kind of do that I, I think at least within the law they talk about orcs like that i think often they do paint them the same but um but yeah it's a good example of how how different you can get with, with yeah. wanting to do a green scheme yeah it um, looks fantastic i really like as well what he's done with like the hair spikes kind of thing where it's sort of blends in almost what, but... from green to yellow yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's, it's really, really cool good. okay next up we had rich from the team paint another green scheme this one's a lot more vibrant got this sort of almost like lizard i was gonna say frog kind of man it's, going it's, on it's got a chameleon vibe going on and i absolutely love it like yeah it's, yeah it's really really ace i i mean i don't want to distract from the model too much but the basing is really cool yeah, yeah. uh with this sort of uh, the basing is almost what James was alluding to where he was like the other option that they could have gone for on their one where it was like, yeah, a bit of a Mars type thing. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Obviously that, that, yeah, that goes quite well with the, uh, with the green and having the like, the, the kind of dust from the base. I was going literally onto just about to say that. Cool. I was literally just about to say that. Exactly. Yeah. They're quite like good. They seem like quite good sculpts to do that sort of thing for, cause there's like lots of bits in the feet for the dust to get like caught. If that yeah. You're sense. not going to be like running through the desert and not having anything getting between your toes. Like, yeah. Like, I don't always like it when I see it on like space Marines and stuff. Cause I'm like, well, it's just flat panels. Like, yeah, it's going to just roll off. Like exactly. it's going to, it's going to might stain it a little bit, but yeah. And also um, you think like, how did it get on the top of the foot? It doesn't make sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, <laughs> Just yeah. kicking his feet as he's walking through. <laughs> yeah, no, um, it's really fantastic. A darker metal as well, I think, than everyone else has gone for. I really like yeah. that. Yeah, I really like the fact that it's dark. It looks either aged or just really like, dirty, and, like which is quite quite cool. Um, but yeah, the, the, I like the blue accent and the hair and little spines like growing out of the arms. Uh, just that that turquoise punch. It just looks looks really really. It's good. interesting actually talking about that because we were saying how the hair. Whatever the hair is, is kind of it's the similar thing to the spikes. I think we've all just instinctively done them all the same color. Yeah, I don't think anyone's broken those up no, no. between the difference between the hair and the spikes. I don't think skin. so. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 There's actually a we're gonna have a tutorial for this exact model going up on our Patreon as well. So if anyone likes that in particular, yeah, they can. Uh, so patreon.com forward slash siege studios. There'll be a full PDF guide uh, for this model and many others you can find. I think it's 300 plus tutorials we've got over there now. Yeah. And this will be one of them. And actually, soon. Rich has done a lot of them. So if you like the look of that, you should see what he's done with some other stuff as well. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Okay. Uh, Eric from the team has painted two. So uh, already, so this is another as good one. as us. This is another <laughs> one like what we were saying with Paul, where he's like, oh yeah, I've just done this. I've got a couple of evenings or whatever. Eric, when we did the Tyranids, he did three. Eric, Eric, he done them so quick as yeah, well. And with loves, these. Loves an organic, organic miniature, and and these are like right up. His let's street. do let's do the darker one first. Yeah. So mm -hmm. let's have a look at that. Uh, first of all, I mean, it wouldn't be me if I didn't pull him up on it straight away. Green base for him. I'm gonna I'm gonna. Do you know what I'm um, gonna say? How he's managed to make me not hate it, not <laughs> hate a green base for him. I don't know, but it looks for that looks fine. It looks perfect. Do you know why? Do you know, you know, why? Do you know why? why? No, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, do you know why? Because it incorporates with the basing scheme. You see that moss on there? See the grass on it's there? It's not just that. It's yeah. just it's also the fact that the model has also got green splashes exactly. on it. So you've got like the little the like the thigh band thing that he's got, the sash across the chest as well. Yeah, I mean like, I have to admit it, but a, a black base room would not work here. No. It wouldn't it wouldn't no. It wouldn't work. You could maybe do grey if you really wanted, but I think the fact that he's made the green base room uh look appealing to me is a success in itself. But also um, I was hoping someone was going to do a black, like black skin. I think it, it looks, it looks really cool. I love the, the 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 sort of like tummy underside of the model, not the back. Obviously, having that white kind of like 
pattern in and it incorporates it on the head. Yeah, um, but, and, and even beyond that, because if you look at where the actual sculpted detail is, he's actually interpreted it further up the neck. Yeah, That's yeah, not actually yeah. sculpted on it. Even on, on the, the even on the sides as well, he's 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 kind of put this pattern into its own. It's like place. blends in, doesn't it? It's not this like harsh line. It's yeah. like this sort of like he's like created a pattern transition. Yeah, exactly. Um, and he's done that on the head as well, which looks really cool. I really love the striations on the hair as well. It just it sort of like looks like the 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 black kind of tone is is feathering down the hair as well to a white, which is quite cool. And you've got these like sort of stripe sort of things going on as well, which sort of leans into the, I guess the markings that you would have from like these different packs and whatnot. Yeah. The, wood yeah. the wood grain on the gun looks really good as well. Like he's done a great job of just adding some stuff of wood grain on there, which is, which is really nice. The, um, one of the things that Eric does a lot, which he clearly, I think the reason he enjoys doing like a lot of the natural, um, creature models is he'll pull from like real insects and things like that. Uh, or real animals and things, which maybe not so much on this one, probably on the next one a little bit more, but he did that for the Tyranids as well. Um, so I think that's you where... You say he... that, but like this to me immediately looks like some sort of like aquatic creature, like this kind of like shark, dolphin sort of thing with that like underside. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was, I was going to say... Like a killer whale crew. I yeah. was going to say yeah. on here, probably the pattern that we were just talking about is like the the version of that. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Um, but It looks the... like something you would see in real life though, if you get... I'm sure yeah. there's like frogs that are like jet black and they've got white splotches like that. Or is it, it's, it's, it's a combination of either. It just like... looks right, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, on to the next one. Best still last, in my opinion. Yeah. This is my favorite this from is, the bunch. This is my this favorite. This is absolutely wild. Like, this Literally. is. Yeah. Like, this is really good. If someone it's did an army of these, oh, oh god. my God. This caught me off guard because I hadn't seen. I, I didn't even know Eric was painting any. This just showed up on my desk just out of nowhere mm -hmm. and it completely took me aback. It was is absolutely incredible. It's such a creative and unique approach to these models, which I've not seen. I've not seen anyone else doing like too many markings on these models in general, let alone like a tiger stripe like this. Like, it's yeah. absolutely fantastic. I love the way that it's not just on the like the more orangey parts. It does feather in onto the chest. As exactly. Well. I think that's probably yeah. one of my favorite bits. That's such a subtle thing to potentially like gloss over as well but the fact that that does come all the way across um it's interesting that he's obviously on, on both of them so on that with the stripes and then on the other one as we were saying by extending the pattern yeah he made an effort to tie those two surfaces in together yeah um and not just have a harsh line i think that's really yep. cool and maybe not something that everyone would think about doing well, it's even it's even the interesting choice of doing the lower jaw in a lighter color and the top and the top of the beak being in that darker tone as well like it's just sectioning the details on the model by using that color to show like the patterning moving across the miniature which i think is just great yeah i think it, I, yeah, I think it looks so cool i'm praying that someone sees that and books in with us for us to <laughs> copy that because we get that sometimes when we do these things like they'll use our images as references they'll see it and be like oh i want that and i'm uh i'm praying someone books in some crew with that as a reference i think yeah and uh brown base room so instantly a winner yeah he's done me there as well because it looks good it does it's it fine. works it works yeah. model really well yeah awesome as artists we know how time consuming painting miniatures is especially if you want to achieve a high standard for tabletop or display life is busy and we don't all have eight hours a day to paint Plus, if you're still early in your painting journey, it may feel that you're a long way off ever owning your own beautiful army for your games. For 10 years, Siege Studios has been delivering bespoke miniature painting commissions to collectors and gamers all over the world. We have a world-class team of artists from Golden Demon winners to ex-studio painters, collating hundreds of years of collective experience. Here at Siege, we offer a series of painting levels and services to meet your needs and budget, whether you want a favorite character for your display or a stunning gaming army. We pride ourselves on offering well above the industry standard of quality and our customer experience. To see our gallery, learn more about our services and get a quote now, head over to siegestudios.co.uk or head to the link in this episode's description. So if you've been following the podcast for the past few months, you'll know that all of this year we have been doing a painting challenge for every single month. And in the month of March, it is March for McCrag. So we've asked everyone in the community to submit your entries and thank you everyone uh, so much who participated really really fun to see all of these rolling in over the course of the month yeah and we uh sorry just to clarify we didn't come up with march from a crag we're not trying to take credit for yeah, that yeah, we, yeah there was two that we kept the same march from a crag and october, october. we felt yeah. where they were baked into the community we didn't want to yeah overtake them and so. just quickly before we dive into uh this month's submissions next month is april's apocalypse so the idea for that is to paint anything you want 
adding to your existing army. So yeah. it's just to just to buff up any force that you've got. If you want to share anything that you've done, please submit your entries on Instagram or on the Siege Studios Discord. But please remember to put the hashtags Paint Perspective Podcast and Apocalypse. Both of those are going to be on screen for you now. Uh, before we get into these entries, what have we uh, done for March from a that is a question. Yeah. <laughs> you you called something out of retirement, didn't you, Joe? Something because same, same. Oh yeah, we can same, put that up on the. Something came out of retirement. Didn't we, we? we can put that up. I did say to these two that I was going to submit this, which is um, I can't guarantee that it's the first model I ever painted as a child, but it's it's one of. What we'll say, um, Joe, the whole point of this challenge is that you paint something new rather than submitting something that you've already done. He did. He retouched the base from a different color. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I was going to, I jokingly submitted this, but yeah, I didn't paint any. Uh, obviously, as you all know, um, I, I, I was ill a little bit. I haven't painted much. I don't paint much anyway at the moment. So didn't really get, you're lucky you got your 75% crew model done, to be honest. Um, as I alluded to, I was tempted to put a, a helmet on the base and say, yeah, oh, much of a crack. But yeah, didn't didn't get to it. Um, this month I'll work something out for next month. I don't have an army, so that might be. It's just a free month, really, isn't it? Yeah, paint anything. James, done a base. Fallen brother Palio. He was going to be the victim of the flesh uh, shaper, but um, the flesh shaper is currently invisible. Um, he's yeah, that, he's <laughs> this that, is he's the, that stealthy. Yeah, this is the reason that your crew thing wasn't done. Yeah, I just got. I really, I, I thought I really want to do something really cool. Put like a fallen enemy on the base for the flesh shaper. Show he's just killed something. Uh, and I found this really cool bit of basin. I don't know what kit that fallen marine is from. So someone who knows it's the apothecary, isn't it? No, it's not. It's another model. I don't know. I don't. Yeah, I thought know. it was the apothecary first, but it's not. It's not. Okay. I don't actually know what it's from. So if anyone knows, and, and you can see it on screen now, but if anyone knows, then just just uh, let me know because I actually want to know what kit that's from. But um, but yeah, yeah I there. I just spent ages cutting it and like getting a crowbar to fit it onto a thirty two mil base, um, and then yeah, just had a lot of fun. Always a great tool for cutting the crowbar. The crowbar, yeah, yeah. staple, yeah, yeah. yeah. staple cutting tool. Put that up there with the power tools for drilling your yeah. barrels. James is sat there with his Dewalt uh, drill and, and a crowbar and a crowbar to get it off the sprue. Yeah, yeah. It sound. Was, it was an analogy, but never mind. <laughs> Not a good one. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, so I had a lot of fun painting it, and uh, yeah, just just tried to marry the the sort of uh, the rock and work stuff obviously with what me and I discussed for the basin on the, uh, the shape that I had done and then yeah just done an ultramarine um, it's quite funny because I posted it and uh, and tagged the one true uh, son of Gulliman Mr. Nick Baton himself who uh, thoroughly enjoyed the uh, the the, uh, the the fallen fallen ultramarine on the base but um, nice one but yeah okay so for my one unfortunately I didn't have enough time to finish here we go <laughs> There's a lot of unfortunateies this episode all the way through. I will say, in terms of time investment, I think I'm like at the top of the chain for this Probably, one. Probably, yeah. Uh, it's a little bit of a teaser. I've been working on a long overdue video project, which I cannot share the details of yet, uh, but I will put a little whip uh, on the screen, a little work in progress of where it's at. But uh, there'll be a video for this Marine coming soon. That's all I can say. Uh, is in progress. It should be finished very soon, hopefully. Yeah, but uh, so we'll give we'll give George a pass on that one. Yeah, yeah. film doing it There's to reasons. film for a video. It's obviously takes a lot longer, limited time. So that's yeah. where we're at. And I didn't want to work on it in my own time because then the video wouldn't have anything to go with it. So yeah. there we are, sort of limited for that. Uh, should we? We are. All of the uh, contributions from the community have been on the screen while we've been speaking. Uh, are there any uh, in particular notable mentions that we want to give a little shout out to? Yeah, I, I really like there's I'd not fully clued up on the primaris tanks, but there's I think there's a repulsor. Is that yep. a repulsor? Yep. I think it's the only tank that's been uh submitted. And I think I'm like I feel like I'm in the minority of someone who actually really enjoys the uh Space Marine tank designs, the primaris ones and the repulsors and the gladiators and, and things like that. You're on your own. Um yeah. well, I just said I'm in the minority. Yeah. Um <laughs> Uh, I think they can look really cool, especially when they're all painted. And what I like about this one is it's mostly because I think there's so many guns on it that you get a lot of that red weapon casing. Yeah. There's but a lot I, of red on it. I love on the tanks where, especially in the, the context of an army, if the tank has just a a higher percentage of a spot color yeah. on it. Yep. So maybe some panels are done a different color and things like that, a little pattern or something. It can be a bit of an attack of one color, otherwise. Can't yeah, it? I do. I do like that on on some of the tanks. Um, 
So I think the amount of red on it, especially as it's like a tech marine hanging out the top as well, so that's some extra red. Um, yeah, I just really liked the the kind of ratio, of the the extra spot color there, and some nice, presumably airbrush work on the uh, shading on the panels and things like that. Nice one. Uh, one I've picked. There is a red uh, Gravis Captain in here, which I believe is like a successor chapter sort of situation. Uh, but I just really love the color scheme of this, like vibrant blue cloth work with the with the red armor and the the black detailing as well. It's kind of Blood Angels esque, so that's a win for me. But uh, Genesis chapter, yeah, really sharply painted, very well executed overall. Uh, James, so I, I really, really, absolutely like this moment. I saw it when I was searching through, um, and it, it is from Chill Chill Paints, uh, and it is a new rendition of the Terminator or Brother Sergeant Valius from the very first second edition uh, Terminator box set. Uh, so yeah, he's used the, um, the the old sort of style banner on one of the new Dreadnought, uh, one of the new Terminators that came from uh, Leviathan and done a green base room on it. So I think that, yeah, I think that that, that deserves a very, very big thumbs up. Just an, as an additional shout out, there was a couple of uh, retro submissions which uh, took me by surprise. Actually, there was like a whole retro force in there as well uh, yeah, from Old Hammer Nerd. If someone has, if they've painted those all in this month, then very fair play. Then fair play yeah, but still looks cool together. They're actual old models as well, aren't they? They are. Yeah, um, fit into his name though, or yeah. their, their name. Um, we had we had absolutely tons of submissions for this month. So again, thank you everyone to the listeners who has participated. Um, really look forward to seeing what everyone has done in the month of April for Apocalypse. I think for Apocalypse as well, I'm going to encourage. Um, you don't have to. Uh, obviously, we're saying add to your army, but I'm encouraging full army shots. I want to see some. I want to see shots of your whole army, even if you haven't painted everything in. Well, yeah, I think that makes sense. Obviously, that. It, the name is obviously from Apocalypse, and that's about big, big armies and big forces. Yeah. So that would make perfect sense. You can either add to your army or, yeah. so or, have it, a or massive, start a new one. Or start a new one, yeah. But if you, yeah, if you have an army existing and you're adding a couple of units to it or you're adding a character to it or something, I want to see the full army. Nice. If you enjoy listening to these podcast episodes every single week, I'd like to ask that you could please do us one small, tiny favor in return and hit that subscribe button on YouTube or the follow button on your podcast app. It takes only two seconds and it really, really helps us out and it allows us to bring you these episodes for free every single week. Thank you so much. Back to the episode. Question of the week time. Thank you everyone for submitting your questions for question of the week. If you have a question that you would like us to answer on a future episode of the podcast, please leave it in the comments down below on YouTube. Or if you are listening on any of the audio platforms, please fire us a DM on Instagram at Siege Studios. This question. <laughs> so I actually had a bit of a Bit of a joke last week where I said uh, that Grimdark Mark was coming in with all of these uh, all of these questions found on the show, but a uh, bit of a rebuttal from painted by Jim who says it's time to dethrone Grimdark Mark. That's right, it's Jim again, not Earthworm or Carey, with a question for the podcast, a question that's so out of left field that flat earthers would not be able to explain where it came from. <laughs> so this he says uh, what is your go-to meal for a painting session personally i find this an area never covered but the difference a solid meal makes uh to the ease at which i can apply edge highlights is quite extraordinary any thoughts on this i've never really thought about i've it, never thought about this i've never really thought about it he's right it is pretty far out of left field yeah, yeah um i I'm now thinking I can maybe blame a lot of my painting on an empty stomach, potentially, mm. because I don't think I ever. I don't think I ever go. I, I'm definitely not bringing a snack to the painting table. No, by the way, I don't know where you're all sitting. That's like that, that's night. like that trope of like the eating Doritos while you're playing video games. It's like I'm not about that. I'm not getting like yeah, you know. So I don't know if that's where we're going with this, but I'm not. I'm not about to bring like popcorn to the to the painting table. Not, like, I suppose no. some snacks do lend itself better to painting than others because I will say that occasionally. I'll have like, cause I like to have a coffee. So occasionally there'll be like a biscuit on standby. I might be like, if I'm feeling crazy, like from uh, well, leftover like from the weekend. Yeah, but painty you, fingers and stuff. Yeah, but you, and then you're picking you up your crumb, biscuit. Crumbs in your palate. Like, I'm pretty, like, I'm yeah. pretty deliberate about keeping it away from the, the painting zone. I almost like hold my biscuit away from my desk. Yeah, yeah. But, no uh, depends, contamination. If, you, if you're a dipper, then then it's not so bad because it just, you know. You dip yeah, biscuit, it's you know, a not, bit. It does yeah, depend on the biscuit really, doesn't it? It does, yeah. yeah. Let's not yeah. go down that rabbit hole because there's yeah, a lot. a whole yeah. conversation that we're not ready for, I think. Love a jammy dodger. Yeah, I think I'm just going to say... Just sync some pre-workout 
before. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably my go-to. I'll just sink some pre-workout. Yeah. And uh, and then you're in for a, an all-night painting session. Yeah. Pretty, pretty. You might get the shakes actually. So probably not good for a twilight. Actually. <laughs> um, yeah, just a banana, banana and and pre-workout. Being honest, most of my painting comes in the evening and it's post dinner. Normally, like pretty much straight after. So no, not. So you bit. are like full. You yeah. are. Yeah, you've had your. Yeah. Occasionally, occasionally. What's an average George dinner? <laughs> My friends are going to be laughing if they listen to this because this has become a bit of a meme. Oh, what, within your group? Oh, yeah, with like the sort of meals that I make. I get, I'm, when it's just me, like in, on a weekday and I'm, I'm home from work and I'm feeling lazy, like there are some very rogue, like slapped together, unhinged meals, which I'm not like going to get into. Full, I'm full, not going to shame myself. <laughs> too, full teenage too boy dinner. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But uh, regardless of that, uh, one thing that I'll occasionally, I'll, sometimes I will have like, Packet of sweets or something while I paint, you know, little little snack, little yeah, sugar, sugar hit. Yeah, not for me, not for me. I can't be doing it. What about you, James? Are you? Uh, so if I'm gonna have a meal before before painting, uh, I've, I always have, think painting when you're not hungry is good, just for just for maintaining control and that kind of stuff. So I probably say um, I have to choose. I something. have to lose control when I'm hungry. <laughs> yeah, that is fair. Do you find That's how get... you lose your brush protectors. Yeah, that yeah. is fair. Yeah, I eat them. <laughs> <laughs> Do you find that like? Any any sort of hobby rage you have, that's going to be pent up from the hangriness. Yeah, like, probably. You know, you're getting frustrated. It's not going yeah. well. I'm learning a lot about myself here, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm going to go for a uh, tofu and tofu stir fry with with uh, peanuts and vegetables. That's what I'm going to go for. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Classic. What, what you, before? I'm, I'm assuming. Before, yeah. yeah what, okay. what, what do you yeah. think? I mean, stir fry while I'm <laughs> while yeah, trying Does he use his like, brushes like chopsticks? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just turn the brush around. All about efficiency. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, uh, Painted by Jim. Hobby yeah. hacks. This is our little closing tradition for the podcast where we share a little quick tip or a hobby hack, if you will, with you. Uh, I've been getting a lot of flack for my hobby hacks. So I've been been putting my thinking cap on. Uh, <laughs> I've got I've got a useful one for once, which is more than James can normally say. To be fair, mm-hmm. and Joe, you kind of I never don't think I, I don't so. think I've ever submitted one. No, I just like to sort of sit here. No, you've definitely you've definitely done one. I can't I remember what it was. You've definitely you, done one. I feel like you've definitely done one. I actually genuinely don't think I've ever put one forward. I just like to sit here and nod and then like and then whinge about the quality of them. Yeah, so yeah. so I, I think you should come up with all of the hacks for April. <laughs> That's, Leave it out. That's that's what Leave I think. Leave it out. Hacks right, like drink pre-workout before you paint. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sort of solid. Uh, All right. Yeah. If you really want me to, I will. Yeah. I'll I think that should be a challenge for it. I think you right, should come yeah. up with some That's hacks. a disservice to our listeners because they're just going to get absolutely terrible tips. All right. Whoa. 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 What, a bit bit judgmental. <laughs> bit judgmental. I th- they're good, they're good yeah. when it's set. Four, four, was it four or five? Four, four or five yeah. for April. Well. There you go. I'll do every hobby hack in April. <laughs> there we go. Well, Joe, I think you're going to like this week's hobby hack. So you have uh, you've turned me onto the light that is the magnifying headset for uh, for painting your models. You've spoken... I have an interesting update on this, by the way. But carry on. No, okay. Go on. You, do you want to go into that first? Um, so previous on the uh, podcast, I've bragged about my perfect eyesight. And, oh yeah. <laughs> um, turns out, actually, what if you are needing if you don't have glasses and you are finding a benefit from using the magnifiers you might need glasses <laughs> <laughs> um, so you will see joe now permanently wearing the magnifiers while walking around basically i yeah i uh i have reading glasses now just for like use at work from screens and stuff but it was uh mentioned that i also might find it benefit to uh paint my toy soldiers which was an awkward interaction in the thing um and i tried it while painting the other day and i was like this is like the magnifiers but better yeah because they're made for your eyes and you can see properly yeah so it's yeah. like wild it's actually yeah so you that i might have been a bit off track there's joe's first hobby hack yeah fair enough there you go. Oh, i should have saved it yeah, yeah. Get gla- <laughs> hobby hack one get glasses get, get an eye test yeah. yeah i actually don't benefit from that because i wear glasses but i wear them you, for long distance yeah, so i have you, to do the magnifying headset helps me but not because my eyes don't work just for the I guess yeah mine's mine's more things. that i couldn't focus as much on things that like right in front of me sure so yeah uh, mine is just so that i don't have to sit here and have a head like this far away from my face mm. i guess but uh regardless of that if you happen to have a magnifying headset which We've come to learn that quite a lot of people do. Uh, I'm quite an aficionado of taking photos of models. It's something that I've done a lot of. Uh, people often struggle with taking like little work in progress shots, like at their hobby desk. 
and a little hack that I've come up with for you. If you have, a, if you, especially if you've got like a phone and you're struggling, like you can't zoom in on like the details or you find you have to crop your photos. A lot of the magnifying headsets have like removable lenses because they're often interchangeable. If you grab one of those and you just slap it in front of your camera lens, you'll find that, oh, hey, presto. It's like having a zoom lens for your camera. Zooms you right in. That's that, pretty good. I, I was That's thinking, as you were explaining it, I was thinking that can't be what it's got to be. I was like, that can't be it. He's going to say something else. Does that actually work? It probably? actually works. I can confirm it works. Fair I enough. So this was an idea that I had. And I thought, oh, there's no way that's going to work though, surely. Yeah, it totally works. Wild. Do you know what that reminds me of? Really quick tangent of a story. Before, um, when I was a teenager, it was sort of pre-iPhone. It was just kind of coming into iPhones. Um, but not everyone had one. So um, a few of my friends all had like digital cameras and stuff that we would take around, just like gigs and, and things like that. And one of my friends got a film, a fisheye camera that was like, but it was a film camera. Yep. Um, so the viewfinder was a fisheye thing. Mm -hmm. um, and we used to take his viewfinder and sellotape it to the front of our <laughs> camera and take a picture on our digital camera through the fisheye uh, viewfinder. And it actually That's used not to as work. silly as you think, though, because I don't know if you remember before phones started having like multiple cameras and all the zooms and stuff in them. Do you remember you used to get those little accessories? That you like could like clip on the lens. corner, yeah. the little clip on lens. Similar, is, yeah, similar yeah. thing to that. And it actually used to work. So yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, cool little, cool, cool. little hack. I've redeemed it. I think. Yeah, I'll take that as a W. Yeah, yeah, nice. Fair. Yeah. Nice. Well, the real hack is get glasses. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, yeah. yeah, the true winner of the, of the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you everyone for listening to this week's episode of Paint Perspective. If you could please check out all of the links in the description of this episode to our website where you can get a quote from us for a commission. Also check out our Patreon for some awesome tutorials. Thank you everyone for listening to this episode. We will catch you next week.